Um, good afternoon. So this week we are continuing in the Gospel of John with a story about Jesus healing a man who had been waiting at the edge of a pool for many years. And these healings by Jesus were in some ways about the particular person that he healed. In other ways they are about how healing can come into all our lives. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we want to be made well. And yet there are obstacles within us and around us. Give us the grace to pick up our mats and walk. And give us the blessing of walking together in faith as a community. In the name of Jesus, our great healer. Amen. So a couple of weeks ago I was at a clergy continuing ed program and we were looking at this exact Bible verse. It was very convenient for my sermon prep, right? And it was a powerful presentation. The Think about your life, the, the leader encouraged us. The stories you have that paralyze you. This man had a story about himself as being paralyzed because other people weren't helping him, weren't caring for him. What story do you have that keeps you trapped in the same patterns, the same inertia, the same unknowns? Next, we wrote, we wrote down a story we were living by and thought of a new story that would be a way of picking up our mat and walking instead of laying by the pool and waiting. And I wrote my down, and I wrote out down how it would feel sort of the before stuck waiting by the pond and the after of walking away. And I realized that walking away is at least as scary as staying and waiting by the pool. After all, what was it like for this man after Jesus healed him? He had been sitting by the pool his whole adult life. I'm assuming 38 years, that's a long time, maybe longer than his adult life, and had, had the habits of a mind and heart that went with that, expecting other people to take care of him and to solve his problems for him. And what would it be like now that his paralysis was part of his past and not part of his present, that it couldn't be an excuse anymore, it couldn't be a barrier? What would it be like to take step after shaky step and learn how to live a more ordinary life, one where he earned his own room and board and saw people eye to eye and no longer had to live out the story of a man paralyzed for life. What happens after the healing? It is exciting, and at the same time, there are a lot of unknowns. So about two and a half years ago, after dreaming about it for a good seven years, I decided to quit working at my call with a nonprofit organization and to go where I believed God was calling me next, to start a new church based on a radical welcome to all people, but with a particular focus on folks in their 20s and 30s, who sometimes have a harder time finding a place that feels both like home and has a progressive theology. So the name 6-8 comes from a favorite Bible verse, Micah 6-8. What does that say? Pop quiz. Act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with God. Yes, there are many translations. All are acceptable. That's right, there's one in the back. Yeah, that's right, that's right. And that is what we've been aiming for and working towards and praying about. A faith community that helps all of us grow in our ability to work for social justice, to love with wisdom and vulnerability, and to go deeper in our relationship with God. And so today we're remembering that two years ago we launched. We had our first weekly worship service. We had a lot of friends and neighbors come and join us for the celebration. And then the next week we did it all again, learning and practicing and growing. And what I feel like we had in common with the man who picked up his mat to walk is that in some ways what we have been doing together, building this community, growing in our faith, growing in our service to the world, is a response to Jesus' challenge, to Jesus' healing in our lives. It might be that before the launch, we were watching other people walk by, and be, we were watching other people be about walking forward in Jesus' way. But it is one thing to watch someone else walking a new life, and it's something else to walk the talk for yourself. So it has been an amazing and beautiful and challenging two years, as we saw in our photo uh, in our video that we watched. And I believe in 6-8. I, I know that is shocking, but I really do. I believe in 6-8, and I believe that in what we are about. I love that we can say together, what should a church be like? And then we do that thing. 
I love our our music. I love our unusual and beautiful music, and not just the stuff I wrote, right? Okay. <laughs> I love that every month, and sometimes more, we are out together serving homeless and hungry and lonely people or caring for the environment, and we're inviting our friends along to join us. I love that we can have a conversation together after the sermon, and that often what you all have to say totally sums up and finishes out the thing that I was trying to get at, or that a personal story that someone shares Uh, from one person might have a meaning or a spark in someone else's story in someone else's life I love that we can try out new things together I love that I've met and gotten to know so many people I would never have gotten to meet or know otherwise being a part of this work trying to listen for and answer God's call is so challenging it is meant for me picking up my mat even what I was hoping was that someone else would carry me to the water right And it means recognizing again and again that Jesus is the one who can heal us, who can move us, who can free us. So my hope for 6-8 in the coming year, as we begin to grow out of being a toddler, being a two-year-old congregation, and into being perhaps a young child, the metaphor breaks down at a certain point, but anyway, (laughs) it's that we would grow on both the inside and on the outside. My hope is that each of us as individuals would grow in our ability to live out the Christian faith, whether it's in regular spiritual practices or simply in the way that we live and treat our neighbors day to day. And my hope is that as a community, we would develop ways of caring for and encouraging each other in our lives and in our struggles and in the triumphs of day to day life. My hope is that our community ties would thicken, that we would get to know each other better and find ways to support and care for each other. My hope is that we will grow in our ability to put our welcoming statement into action, that someone coming in new will know not only because we say it, but also because of how they are treated, that no matter where they are on life's journey, they're welcome here. And that each of us whether we've been here for two years or two weeks, we'll also find that welcome for ourselves and extend it to one another. My hope is, too, that we would move outward in our growth, that we would find ways to continue to invite new people in, offering grace-filled hospitality. My hope is that we will continue to speak out for justice together and as individuals, and that we'll find more ways to serve with willing and capable hands motivated by where we see God's amazing love in our own lives. When Jesus heals this man, it's the Sabbath day, which is a day for rest and renewal and not for work, even today. And Jesus gets gets trouble from the local religious authorities for healing a man and telling him to do the work of carrying his mat away. But that is really the least of Jesus' concerns. His first question always is, do you want to be made well? Can you live a whole life that includes risks, that includes being vulnerable, because of that, and because of that, becomes an abundant life? Can you stop being so careful and afraid? Can you trust me? My prayer is that together we will answer yes that we will keep picking up our mats and walking, taking the risks that come with healing, that we will help each other find that well of abundant, eternal life. May it be so by the power of Jesus, in the strength of God our Creator, and in the loving joy of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So let's take a few moments for reflection. And I believe that I do not have a reflection question. So um, let's, uh, let's be thinking about how God might be calling us um, forward and where we see God at work already in our community um, and in our lives.